Jody Wilson-Rabo. And as she mentioned, the government's bill tabled today on physician-assisted dying is a response to the Supreme Court of Canada, which more than a year ago struck down parts of the criminal code dealing with the issue. Those sections of the criminal code will become null and void on June the 6th, which means that Parliament has a deadline if it hopes to have a legal framework in place for doctor-assisted dying. Now, now let's look at the main measures contained in the bill. Patients requesting assistance in dying must be mentally competent adults over 18 years of age, be, quote, suffering intolerably and for whom death is reasonably foreseeable. They must submit a written request signed by two independent witnesses, and that request must be consented to by two independent physicians or authorized nurse practitioners. Well, the bill now goes before Parliament, and I'm joined by three MPs who will be debating the government's legislation. Sean Casey is a Parliamentary Secretary to the Justice Minister. Michael Cooper is a Conservative Justice Critic, and he also sat on the Special Parliamentary Committee, which made recommendations to the government on how to formulate its assisted dying legislation. And Mathieu Dubay is a Deputy House Leader for the NDP. All three of you, welcome. Thanks for taking the time. A pleasure. Sean Casey, can we start with you? What should Canadians make of this bill? As reported, it is, it is severely restricted compared to what the committee had re uh, recommended. But what should Canadians make of the bill now that it's tabled? Look, um, end-of-life issues are deeply personal and, uh, and deeply complex. And so what Canadians should make of this is that uh, all of the considerations that were brought forward by the uh, Joint Committee, by the lobby groups, by the various panels over the, the course of the last uh, 12 or so months since the decision was released uh, have weighed heavily on the Cabinet and the government in, in bringing forward this legislation legislation. Um, it is a compressed time frame and with issues this complex we believe that what has been put forth is the is the best solution. There are uh, rigid safeguards uh, around what is now a, a constitutional right to uh, medically assisted death and uh, this is the, the, the right solution. Okay, Michael Cooper, your position on the bill now that you've seen it. Well, there are some good aspects uh, to the legislation introduced. Uh, I was pleased that a number of the recommendations in our dissenting report were adopted in the legislation in keeping minors out of it, uh, in uh, limiting the scope of physician-assisted dying to physical illnesses, and recognizing the risks involved with advanced directives. Uh, I was disappointed uh, that the legislation does not include conscience protection uh, for physicians and allied health professionals. That will, I guess, be left to the provinces and uh, health regulating, uh, professional regulating uh, bodies, uh, but that is uh, disappointing. And uh, also it was a bit surprising to see that the legislation uh, would allow nurses, in addition to physicians, to uh, be able to decide whether a patient meets the uh, criterion for a physician assisted dying. Right, it uh, refers to authorized nurse practitioners is yes. what it says, I, bet, I guess. Yeah. Right, and so uh, the, most of the evidence before the committee uh, was that this is a matter that should be left to physicians, and indeed that was the recommendation of the uh, Special Joint Committee uh, main report. So uh, I have some concerns around that. And uh, lastly, I, I was pleased to see uh, that the Minister of Health did announce funding for palliative care, uh, but uh, I'm concerned because uh, palliative care was completely left out of the budget, so I don't know where this money is going okay. to come from. Okay, let's go to Matthew Dubé on behalf of yourself, but also the NDP. This is a free vote. Let me just stress that it is a free vote for all three parties, um, but uh, your reaction to the bill? Well, I mean, the good news is that we're, we've arrived at this point. I think it's uh, pretty challenging to have had to deal with this issue in such a short time. If we look at uh, Quebec, who trailblazed, uh, where I'm from, who we trailblazed on this issue, it was several years of committee hearings across uh, the province. So uh, to have done it so quickly, I think, is something that's very challenging for the government. We recognize that. Uh, that being said, we do have some questions that we hope to see answered over the course of the debate, and especially the work that will be done when the bill gets to committee. Uh, we do feel there is 
is a lack of clarity over some of the wording that's used, for example. And mm -hmm. uh, as my colleague Mr. Rankin said earlier today, you know, uh, maybe we should seek some guidance from the Supreme Court as opposed to passing a bill and then having uh, folks line up for, to the Supreme Court to see if their case fits or doesn't fit in the bill. So I think there's there's some questions that need to be raised around that, and and we do share the uh, the questioning around around palliative care. The bill specifically mentions uh, non-legislative tools, and and clearly they're speaking of okay. that, and we have to see where that's going to go because, as my colleague mentioned, it there was no mention of that in the budget. Okay, you mentioned the, the issue of wording. Uh, let's put this to Sean Casey on behalf of the government. One question that has come up today, and that is new wording that was not in the either the report from the committee, the joint parliamentary committee, or in any previous documents. And it's wording saying that uh, the, the patient to request assistance in dying must be, death must be uh, foreseeable. Um, and some people are saying, well, what does that mean? Is that, are we talking about a terminal phase and all that? But it's new wording, and there's a lot of alarm bells have gone off uh, saying, does this mean then that the only people who will be able to access this have to prove that they're in some sort of terminal phase or whatever? People are not sure about that new wording, which we've not heard before. And ultimately, it will, it will be up to the courts to interpret the wording in the statute. But the, uh, the intent is that uh, the persons who avail themselves of uh, medical assistance in dying um, are in an, uh, an irreversible state of decline in their capabilities. Um, so this is a further refinement of what the court said in terms of grievous and irremediable harm. So it was an, it, the, the wording is an attempt to um, clarify, uh, to be more specific in terms of the, uh, what the Carter decision said with respect to grievous and irremediable. Okay, a big question. I have all three of you there. You're going to be debating this. This is going to, this is before Parliament now. You have less than five sitting weeks of Parliament before the June the 6th deadline set by the Supreme Court when all previous measures become null and void. Uh, do you think you're going to, do you have enough time to get this passed? Sean. What I would say is that there was a remarkable show of goodwill and a willingness to uh, roll, up their, roll up our sleeves and work long hours through the process of the special joint committee. Um, my hope and expectation is that we're going to see that again on the floor of the House of Commons and in the Senate. Everyone recognizes that we're up against a tight, uh, a tight deadline and I really think that this issue isn't partisan. I think that was demonstrated in the special joint committee and I have every optimism that that all parliamentarians will take their responsibilities seriously to, to meet that deadline, even if it means working extended hours to get there. Okay, Michael Cooper, uh, you mentioned that there seem to be more changes and things taken out of this bill that give you uh, satisfaction than there is that give you concern. There's the one concern about conscientious objectors, uh, but you think that might be approached by the provinces or provincial regulations. Uh, do you think this could get passed in five weeks? Well, well, first of all, I think that it could have been and should have been included in the legislation. Okay. And I also raised the issue with respect to nurse practitioners. Sure. But, but do you think uh, this could get passed yeah. in five weeks? It, it is a uh, very uh, tight timeline. Uh, I don't want to be partisan, but I do think some uh, blame does fall to the government in the fact that they have known since they formed government that this was uh, an issue uh, that had, a to begin with, a very tight timeline. Uh, the special joint committee issued its report at the end of February. We are now into mid-April with uh, literally five sitting weeks left to get uh, a highly sensitive and complex piece of legislation through both houses. Uh, but it is absolutely essential that legislation uh, is passed. Uh, otherwise, uh, there will be no certainty for patients, no certainty for, for, for physicians, and no safety safeguards for the vulnerable. So I can say that all of my colleagues in the Conservative okay. Party will be working constructively to see that the legislation be, so, that, gets passed. Okay, just in, and just Matthew Dubé, last, last, uh, we only have 10 seconds left. Matthew Dubé, do you astounding. think this can be passed in five in five weeks? It'll be a challenge, as I said. It's a complicated issue to go through so quickly, but as my, my Mr. Casey said, you know, we have to be ready to roll up our sleeves and, and do that work. That's incumbent on us as parliamentarians. Okay, on that note, I want to thank you. We will be speaking, obviously, over the next few weeks and months. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time, all three of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now, various groups